خدا میں ہے دل کو تیری جستجو گو سے آزم ہے دل کو تیری جستجو گو تھے آدم زباں پر تیری گفتگو گو تھے آدم ہے دل پر تیری جستجو گو تھے آدم زباں پر تیری گفتگو گو سے آدم تیرا ذکر گلشن میں بل بل کے لب پہ تیرا ذکر گلشن میں بل بل کے لب پر کلوں میں تیرا رنگ ہو گو سے آزم تیرا ذکر گلشن میں بل بل کے لب پر گلوں میں ترا رنگ ہو گو سے آزم نظر میں کوئی خوب روح کیوں سمائے نظر میں وائی ول اینی گڈ لکنگ ون لک گڈ ان مائی آئیز اینی مو نظر میں کوئی خوب روح کیوں سمائے بسا میری آنکھوں میں تو ہو سے آزم بسا میری آنکھوں میں تو ہو سے آزم وائی ول اینی گڈ لکنگ ون ان مائی آئیز بی ریسائیڈنگ Why will any good looking one in my eyes be deciding when my eyes are ready you are living of Shazam? Basa meri aankho me tu of Shazam. Hey Suraj agar Mustafa. Hey Suraj agar Mustafa. Ek bar subhan Allah ke dhubha kya hai. Very beautiful share. Very beautiful share. Subhan Allah. Hey Suraj agar Mustafa chand hai tu. Now the agar ya is not if. It's for definite. Subhanallah. Hey, Suraj Agar Mustafa, because Rasul Ipaq is Sirajum Munira. Subhanallah. He is the, is the sun that brightens. Subhanallah. Hey, Suraj Agar Mustafa, Chand Hetu. Hey, Jalwe Tere Chara Suh Ho Se Azam. Hey, Jalwe Tere Chara Suh Ho Se Azam. Baut Namba Kalam Hai. Allama Jameel Al-Qadri Abhi Sharif was saying so I said Allama Jameel Al-Qadri Radhi Allah and he ends this whole lengthy kalam very lengthy kalam Hadrat Jameel Al-Qadri ends by saying Jameel apne murshad ke kurban jau Jameel apne murshad ke kurban jau who was his murshad ala hadrat so it is actually Jameel ala hadrat pe kurban jau Jameel apne murshad ke kurban jau کہ وہ گل ہے کہ وہ گل ہے ان میں ہے بو غوثِ آزم جمیل میں یوں بھی سیکریفائز اپنے مرشد his life upon his مرشد میں جمیل بھی سیکریفائزنگ his life upon his مرشد میں جمیل بھی سیکریفائزنگ for is the rose in whom your figurance is emanating ho se asaf subhan Allah jameel apne murshad pe kurban jau pahut piyar shayt very beautiful shayt inshallah time will permit one day I'll read the whole kalam to you I know this meaning but jameel apne murshad pe kurban jau ke woh gul hai aur un mein bu ho se asaf turud paak allahumma salli ala sayyidna wa nabiyyana maulana muhammad wa ala ala sayyidna maulana muhammad wa ashabihi wa barik wa sallam صلاة وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا سندي يا حبيبي يا طبيبي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وانا وطن درود باك الله سيدنا مولانا محمد ناصر الداني وشفائها وطل القرب ودوائها ونوم الأسطار وضيائها وعليه وصحبه وبارك وسلم اللهم صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد ما عدن الجود والكرم وآله الكرام وربه الكريم وبارك وسلم صلى الله عليه وسلم Alhamdulillah We have Journeyed from Barwi to Gyarwi Alhamdulillah We have transited from Barwi to Gyarwi without leaving Barwi We have transited from Barwi to Gyarvi. Usually Gyara comes first, Bara comes after. 11 comes before 12. But Apna Mamla ye hai ki 12 comes before 11. 12 comes before 11. You get Barwi first. And through the Barakat of Barwi, we got Gyarvi. That's why Rabiu Lawal is first and then Rabiu Lakhir. Hawasi Azam followed Rasul-e Paak Sallallahu to this level that even in the month he went after Rasul-e Paak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is a Ruhani Baat. Okay? 
So, Alhamdulillah, we are in the month of Gyaru Sharif, the month of Sarkari Ghawsi Azam Radiallahu. Actually, even though according to Rewise Ghawsi Park's course, actual Tariq Misal is 17th, Satrawi. Gyarvi Ghawsi Park used to make the remembrance of Rasul Park Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And why he made especially on Gyarvi also? Because it is the day of the visal of his Murshad, Hazrat Abu Sayyid Mubarak al Mahzuni radiallahu So every month on the Gyarva, he was remembering his Murshad. And the whole world remembers the Murshid that come in the Piran and Pir on the Gyarvi Sharif. So don't forget, Gyarvi to Gyarvi must do for us. But also on Satavadi Sharif make Fatiha. It is the day of the come to mostly revise the, the, the Tariq and Visal. And the Gyarvi is the Fatiha of Sarkari Vashifat. Radiallahu ta'ala. So Alhamdulillah we do all. But this is the Barakat of Bari Sharif. This is the Barakat of Rasul Akram Nuri Mujassam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fidaka Ali wa Ummi. Now, we are in the month of Gyarvi Sharif. And inshallah we will talk about Ghawsi Paka radiallahu. Allah willing, especially on the, on the Shab of the Gyarvi Sharif. Which is on Thursday night. Thursday night inshallah Razim. Because we have received the proper Shahadat Shari. Uh, for the sighting of the month as well, because the last month we counted as 29, and then we got Alhamdulillah proper shahadat as Shabi from people who have seen the chant as well. So it is uh, on Thursday night, big night, and Friday, big day. So, like how we got for Barwi Sharif this time, same for Garwi Sharif we're getting. The Thursday night will be the Garwi night, and Friday will be the Garwi day. And I'm reminding you from now, don't forget that how on Barwi Sharif some of you stood outside. And we're giving niyaz. Do it. I told you, even if you can afford one kajur, give it. If you don't, if you don't, if you remember well, in the times of your grandparents when these big nights used to come, before I go into my takrir quickly, you know what you used, used to do? You used to, our kids won't do it. Unfortunately, they feel shy. I don't know what our children feel shy for when it comes to the deen of Allah and well. His what the old people used to do? The children of the house used to be given a basket. If you stayed in Clearwood, in those days, my grandparents' days, I still remember. The children all were given a basket. And they had the little paper packets with the shirni inside. If you remember those packets, that looked like wax wrapped packets. Jalebi or something, something inside that packet. Okay? And full basket. But the barakat of this niyaz that used to happen was when the child went to the basket to all those many houses in the area to give. He went with a full basket but he would always come back with a full basket. But this of giving niyaz and distributing the shirni is the tariqah of our forefathers. Some of them were very poverty stricken financially. It's about the heart, not about the pocket. And this is where the big mistake happens. And this is where the big mistake happens. We think that our strength is based on our pockets. The strength is not based on your pocket. Your pocket is based on your heart. It's based on your heart. And I said this before. My Ustad used to always say that as long as you keep the dolat of the dunya in your hand, you will control it. As long as you keep the dolat of the dunya in your hand, you will control it. But if you allow it to enter your heart, it will control you. It will control you. Our forefathers didn't keep it in their heart. They kept it where it needed to be. And do you know what they kept in their heart? Ghawse Azam. That's why today you are making Maulud Sharif. That's why today I'm making Gyarvi Sharif. Because of our forefathers. But Barmi come, Gyarvi come, big day come, big night come, forget to even go make one Fatiha on their grave. Forget to go and put one flower on their cover. Aj, whatever you got is because of their Barakat. Is their Barakat, don't forget. Topic was supposed to be something else, but I'm just telling you this. These things have to be reminded. I have to remind myself, you have to be reminded about it. So, when Gyarvi comes also, I'm not saying that we do want this year because one wants somebody to give chocolate or toffee to him. Okay. But, it's the sentiment. 
The passion that is behind what you do. And why Mulana? But Mulana, you don't want to hide and do it. Yeah, no problem. But you know why I'm telling you to stand and do it. So other five will see you and want to do like you also. Nekim. Don't be delaying in doing good deeds. And we're going to go there just now. So don't forget when Diyarbhi Shadif comes, don't be shy. Some people feel shy to give niyas. Don't feel shy to give. Because on the day of Qiyamah on Maidan and Mashal, you'll be looking to collect. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. You give here, you collect there. Okay, you give here, you collect there. Okay? Albir la yabla. Waddam la yunsa. Waddayyan la yamut. I'mal ma shi'ta. Kama tadinu tula. Eh? You'll sow whatever you, you'll reap whatever you sow. So sow now. This is the time to sow. And what you must sow good. Through the path of Allah, Masalli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad. Wa ala Ali Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad. Wa ala Sayyidina Mawlana Over the last few weeks, we're talking about our Nabi. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every day we talk about our Nabi. Every Jumai it is about our Nabi. But we're talking specific discussions. I'm going to start from there again today. There's a hadith in Bukhari Sharif. And I think most of you know it, you've heard it many times. فَوَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِي Hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The narrator is Hazrat Abu Huraira. I'm not going to give you the whole sanad of the ruwat of the narrators. I'm starting from Hazrat Abu Huraira. Hazrat Abu Huraira Radhi Allah reports that the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said فَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِي لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أب إليه بولده ووالده. حضرة سيدنا أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه reports that the beloved Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم said والذي نفسي بيده يد means hand but you must understand in this hadith hand does not mean physical. Because we are talking about Allah and Allah is free from hand. Allah is free from physical form. Okay? So it means one, it's a long bahas on interpretation and it's not for now because it will be not understood if I, if I go into it. But simple to understand that according to some of the great scholars, one of the interpretations will be that the divine power of Allah. The divine power of Allah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said for alladhi nafsi biyadi what did Rasulullah Islam say? By him, Allah, in whose divine power is my life. Huzur ne kasam kai. Huzur, walladhi nafsi bi alihi is a kasam. Walladhi nafsi. Is a kasam. Rasulullah Islam takes a kasam. And after taking the kasam, Rasulullah Islam says, La yu'minu ahad. None from amongst you is a believer. None from amongst you is a believer. Hatta akun. Ahabba ilayhi mi walidihi wa waladihi. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, None from amongst you is a believer until he loves me. Until he loves me. In other words, until he does not love me more than his father and his son. But it doesn't only mean father and son. Why Huzur Sallallahu said father and son? It's another discussion. But simple it is said because to a man his father is very important. And that's how it should be. Not like today. To a man his father is very important. Why? Because his nasal is from his father. Subhanallah, subhanallah. His ancestry is from his father. And to him, his son is very important. Because his natsal in the future is from his son. So Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned those two from whom you are and from whom you will be. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, none from amongst you is a true believer unless he does not love me more than his father and his son. And there is another hadith that follows that as well. Now the hadith follows that as well. This is from Hazrat Abu Huraira. 
The second hadith is from Hazrat Anas bin Malik radiallahu Hazrat Anas bin Malik radiallahu he says, and in that hadith, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, when nasi ajma'in is the extra part of that hadith. Okay? None from amongst you is a true believer unless he does not love me more than his father, his son, and all the people put together. What does this mean? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa is telling you that you're not a la yu aminu. None from amongst you is a believer. But it does not mean in that sense. What it means? None from amongst you is a kamil mu'min. Not a mu'min, eh? Kamil. Not the perfect and the true mu'min that you need to be. If you do not love me more than anybody else. Have we forgotten? When Hadrati Umar Faruq Radiallahu anh heard this hadith. When he heard this hadith. Hadrat Umar Faruq said, I'm being brief. Time is not going to allow me to go to. I have not even started to discuss what I thought I'm going to discuss today. Hadrat Umar Faruq Radiallahu an, When he heard this hadith. He said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I love you more than everything except for my own life. I love you more than, I'm being brief. Everything except for my own life. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? He said, Oh Omar, even more than your life. Even more than your life. Even more than your life. And when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, even more than your life. I'm being brief. Hazrat Umar Faruq radiallahu said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi even more than my life. Are you? First when Hazrat Umar heard this riwayat, this hadith sharif, he said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi I love you more than, I love you more than everything except for my life. Because a man loves his life more, ne? Magar Umar Umar te. Subhanallah. Huzur knew when I say this, Umar is going to say this. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Hazrat Umar says, they love you more than everything, but except for my life, life is so valuable. And Rasulullah Pak Salaam said, even more than your life. And the moment Huzur said, even more than your life, and whatever I'm explaining to you is from the ifadat of Murshid e Karim, Huzur Sayyidi Tal Sharia radiallahu anhu, from an explanation of Bukhari which he gives. Amazing. He says, more than your life. Even more than your life. But at that time, Hudur Tarshiri explained something very beautiful. The moment he said, even more than your life. He said, even more than my life. Immediately said, even more than my life. But what happened in that split second that he didn't even say, why? What happened in that split second that Hazrat Umar Faruq didn't even say why Hazur Tari Sharia explains he said this is the tasarruf this is the authority and the power of Rasul Pak over the, over the hearts of the believers <laughs> that when Huzur said this and Hazrat Umar Faruq said Ya Rasulullah I love you more than everything else but except for my life the Nabi took control of the heart of Sayyidina Abu Umar Abu Sayyidina Umar Faruq radiallahu an. and when he put took control of it he put that tajalli in the heart of Hazrat Umar Faruq that when the Nabi said oh Umar more than your life Hazrat Umar saw already gives now more than my life more than my life because of the tajalli of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because of the tasarruf and the control of Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over the hearts of the believers so the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that none from amongst you is a true believer until he does not live, love me more than his father and his son. In other words, his entire family, everybody else. And the other narration says, even more than everybody put together. And both this hadith in Bukhari Sharif and the Bab Hubbu Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa min al-Iman. Bab Hubbu Rasul min al-Iman. Under the chapter Imam Bukhari ties it as that love for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa is from Iman. In other words, it is Iman. Okay, keep this in your mind. I'm telling you this for a reason. Then, Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Bukhari says another chapter. He said such a, another chapter in Bukhari Sharif. And what does he call it? Babu Halawatil Iman. What? Babu 
Halawatil Iman. The chapter discussing the sweetness of Iman. First, he tells you about the love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Kub Iman. The love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi is from Iman. And then after that, he talks to you, talks to you about Bab Halawatil Iman. The chapter about the love for, about the sweetness of Iman. Time is not permitting for me to read the entire narration. But in that, the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, that the one who has three things in him, the one who has three things in him, three things present inside him, he will attain the sweetness of Iman. What he will attain? The sweetness of Iman. Otherwise, I have read the rewrites for you, but the time is not permitting. He will attain the sweetness of Iman. What he means by sweetness? The pleasure and the delight. Okay? The, the sweetness of Iman. Iman ki shirni, chashni. He will taste this. He will attain the sweetness of Iman. What are those three things? Look at how Imam Bukhari is. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give you a, a, a brief lesson also here. What is he doing? First he talks about, if you look at the very beginning of Bukhari, he talks about the Badul Wahi, the coming of narration. Then he talks about the branches of Iman. About the Sha'batu min al-Iman. And talks about new rooms and then he explains some branches of Iman in different chapters. Okay? But here Imam Bukhari has told us before this, Subhanallah, that Kubu Rasul min Iman. Love for Rasul is from Iman and now he's telling you about the sweetness of Iman and he says that a person will not attain the sweetness of Iman until he has three things in him. What are the three things? The first thing that he will love Allah and his Rasul Sallallahu above everything. Look at how this got tied to what came before. Subhanallah. What does he say? That what is the first thing that he should have? He should love Allah and his Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam above everything else. And the second thing, that if a person loves someone, then it should not be for a worldly reason. If a person loves somebody, if I love Abhi Sharif, if I love Ehsan Bhai, or somebody says, I love my chef, he should not love him for worldly reason, but it should be for the sake of Allah and his Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is the second thing. And the third thing, and the third thing, that he hates and he detests to go towards Kufr. He hates and he detests to go towards Kufr. Like he hates being thrown into a blazing fire. <laughs> Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that person who has these three things in him, he will taste the sweetness of Iman. <laughs> but where did it start? <laughs> Love for Allah and his Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He will taste the sweetness of Iman. And Subhanallah, Hadrat Sayyidina Taj Sharia radiallahu anh, asks in one discussion, that why did the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa say sweetness in the hadith? Why did he say sweetness? He could have used any other word. Why did he say sweetness? He says because subhanallah the example given in the Quran the example given in the Quran of Iman is that of a tree. Now Hafiz sahab is here and he will understand that Alam tara ضرب الله مثلا كلمة طيبة كشجرة طيبة أصلها ثابت وفرعها في السماء Allah is saying in the Holy Quran Did you not see how Allah gives an example? Allah is saying in the Holy Quran لم ترى كيف ضرب Have you not seen? Do you not see how Allah gives an example? What is the example that Allah gives? Allah Ta'ala says kalimatan tayyibatan Have you not seen that Allah, how Allah gives an example? What example? Of a pure word Of a pure word Like what? Shajaratin tayyibatan Like a pure tree This is the example of the pure word like a pure tree How it is? Athluha thabitun Its roots are firmly embedded Subhanallah. 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 His roots are firmly embedded, embedded. Wa faruha fi thama. And its branches are in the sky. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And its branches are in the sky. Surah Ibrahim. Surah Ibrahim, ayat number twenty-four. Now here, what is the pure kalima? What is kalimatan tayyibatan? 
حضور سیدی چال شریعہ ایکسپلینز دا پیور کلمہ اس کلمہ ہے طیبہ دا پیور ورڈ اس کلمہ ہے طیبہ which is the کلمہ of sincerity which is the foundation of دین so here the کلمہ is like the firm roots of the tree here the کلمہ is like the firm roots of the tree and the tree is there of ایمان and the branches those things that come due to your following and being firm in iman your devotional acts your namaz your roza your hajj your zakat they are the branches they are the branches and it is ever evident from the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the branches when the prophet of bilab rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke about the sha'batu min al iman about the branches of iman in hadith of bukhari now what are these branches in detail the scholars say that these branches are fulfilling the hukum of allah fulfilling your devotional duties as i just said so what subhanallah the shoots of the pure intentions of the believers huzur al tashri explains something he says this tree has this branch has shoots what are these these are the pure intentions of the believers why because huzur akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that when a believer makes a pure intention then the scent and the fragrance of his intention comes out of his mouth subhanallah and when it comes out of his mouth the malaika come down and smell it subhanallah The angels come down and smell that fragrance and then they write down the good deed for him because of that fragrance before he even does it. Allah. That intention is the khushbu. What is it from the shoots? Allah. Okay? And then it is explained even further subhanallah. It is further explained that what is a good healthy tree? One which is evergreen. I'm being very quick and very brief to end now in 2 minutes. Very fresh and evergreen. What is the other sign of the beauty of the tree? It has nice huge leaves and branches that give shade. And what is the thing that's the best thing about the tree? The fruits. The fruits. Which fruit? The green ones. The ripe ones. And not overripe, but it must be ripe. And what is the beauty of that fruit? Its sweetness. What is the beauty of that fruit? the sweetness the sweetness if the fruit is not sweet kya fayda if the tree is not green kya fayda if it doesn't have big branches with nice leaves what benefit it is so the fruits and the tree are the means of nourishment and the shade is a means of shade for all of us and subhanallah imam ibn abu jamra radiyallahu an says that the tree of iman is always evergreen and his fruits are always ripe which are your actions your good deeds and it will give you shade here and there as well and for understanding this in a spiritual sense I'm going to end with this understanding this in a spiritual sense something that I talked about this morning and I'm going to share with you to end today spiritual the rohani explanation of this of the sweetness why Rasul Salah Islam used the sweetness so that we understand that that the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the greatest tree of iman the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the greatest tree of iman the sahaba ikram are the branches the ahle bayt are the shade the ahle bayt are the shade the awliya allah are its fruits and those who hold firm to them attain the sweetness of this iman attain the sweetness of this iman and those who remain with it under the shade they remain protected and every tree has a unique fruit every tree has a unique fruit with a unique look with a unique taste but they are all connected to the great tree of iman who is muhammad rasulullah and one sacred fruit is ghosi azam jilani radiyallahu anhu one fruit is saja gharib un nawaz one fruit is ala hazrat adim ul barakat radiyallahu anhu and when all of them are in the basket of hazrat maula ali radiyallahu anhu then somebody gives out this tree the fragrance of qadriyat somebody gives out the fragrance of chishtiyat somebody gives out the fragrance of radawiyat but upon all of them is one blessing of a cloud and you know who's that cloud sarkar ghosi azam jilani Dadi radiyallahu anhu that is why Allah Azza says Madra Chisht Bukhara wa Iraq wa Ajmer Madra Chisht Bukhara wa Iraq wa Ajmer kaun si kisht pe barsa nahi jhala jhala tera that the meadows of Chisht and Bukhara and Iraq and Ajmer are there but the rain that descends upon the meadows is that of Sarkari Ghosi Azam radiyallahu anhu and Ghosi Azam has got this makan makam and excellence amongst the awliya that is why he says wa kullu waliyillahu qadmu wa inni wa kullu waliyillahu qadmu wa inni ala qadmin nabi badril kamali
All the awliya Allah on the Qadmi Pak of one of the Nabi or the other. And Abdul Qadir is on the Qadmi Naz of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is the sweetness. This is the sweetness. Hold firm to the pious. Hold firm to Ghosya Pak Allah. Then you will know what is the sweetness of the fruits of Iman. You will know what is the sweetness of being under the tree of Iman. All this is depending on what? Love for Allah and His beloved Rasul.